I am at Icaray Beach in Brazil. Beautiful at first glance, but on taking a closer look, we see plastic pollution. Lots of it. These small pieces in the sand are microplastics, which are any plastic pieces smaller than 5 millimeters, and come in various shapes and sizes. These are the visible microplastics since most are invisible to the naked eye. Plastics have been found in the guts of fishes, turtles, and many sea mammals. But in 2020, a study found microplastics in human organs, the tissues of the liver, kidney, and even lungs in the study sample were found to have plastics. Food stored in baggies plastic bags always have the sound of freshness. We are eating plastics every single day, not just a tiny bit. We eat about 5 grams of plastic or a credit card's worth every single week. This means we eat up to two big recycling bins over our lifetime. This is a video of zooplankton eating microplastics captured in 2015. They are at the base of the marine food chain, which means that most sea creatures have now ingested at least some plastic. Since then, we have found microplastics in salt, seafood, our drinking water, apples and carrots, even in our poop and in the human placenta. This means that babies have their fate sealed with microplastics. We found them in the fetal heart, the fetal lung, the fetal kidney, liver, brain, just about any tissue we looked at uh, in the fetus. Going to a remote place will not help either because microplastics have even been found in the snow of the Arctic and the Alps regions. They were present on Mount Everest too. There's strong evidence that thousands of tons of microplastics are circulating in our atmosphere right now because we find them in the rain as well. Plastic is literally everywhere and we are eating a lot of it. So as we pollute our planet, we are polluting ourselves too. Karma's a bitch. So how did we even get to the stage? What are the health impacts of eating plastic and how do we reduce them? Make sure to watch till the end for the answers. Put them in a polyethylene plastic bag. And to brighten up the plastic tree, plastic decorations. Nowadays, everything can be made in plastic. Plastic has fantastic properties. It is durable, flexible, waterproof, and cheap. It has an enormous variety of applications and even helps save lives in the medical industry. It just does not biodegrade. The answer to our age-old philosophical question, why are we here? Plastic, assholes. Over 380 million metric tons of plastics are produced every year, and this number is expected to triple by 2050 unless we make some real changes. About 40% of the total plastic produced, nearly 160 million tons, is meant for single-use packaging. Now, most of this plastic is found on food packaging, plastic water bottles, and product packaging. Plastics have played a major role in our food and water storage, but that is one of the direct causes of our high plastic ingestion. Most microplastics we ingest are generated from the breaking of plastics we use in our daily activities and the breakdown of plastics polluting our environment by weathering and photodegradation. Microplastics are a complex and diverse set of pollutants instead of simply smaller plastics. They are a group of various types of environmental pollutants, much like pesticides or heavy metals are a vast array of pollutants. This diagram from Roshman et al. displays the various types of microplastics by their chemistry, production source, size, morphology, color, and the chemicals it may contain. Nanoplastics are a subset of microplastics which are less than 100 nanometers. This is comparable to the size of viruses. These nanoplastics are more toxic since they can enter cells and pass through organ tissues such as the lungs and even the brain. Size definitely matters. There are several ways through which plastic particles can enter our body. Orally through drinking water and other beverages, especially in plastic bottles. Eating, of course, especially seafoods and plastic packaged foods. Inhalation of microplastics in the air, especially in industrial environments. And through the skin via personal care products and cosmetics with plastic microbeads. Vehicle tires moving on the road, newly painted surfaces, and synthetic clothes made of polyesters like nylon are also known sources of microplastics. Basically, if you eat or drink directly from plastic containers, bottles, or packaging, which most of us, including myself, do, then you are undoubtedly ingesting microplastics. According to researchers, the average American consumes between 74,000 and 121,000 microplastics per year, and an additional 90,000 particles for people who drank only plastic bottled water compared to filtered tap water. The slightly good news is that about 90% of larger microplastics over 150 microns may be excreted in our poop. However, the smaller microplastics and nanoplastics can be absorbed by our tissues. Studies have reported micro and nanoplastics passing through our circulatory and lymphatic systems after ingestion and inhalation. The general potential impacts of microplastics on human health are related to oxidative stress, 
tissue inflammation and increased uptake or translocation. This means that microplastics transport to other organs and enter our living cells. They can transport to and accumulate in the tissues of the liver, kidneys, lungs, and spleen as shown earlier. When any nanoplastic attempts to enter a living cell, the cell tries to defend itself and produce an inflammatory response to fight it. Because inflammation, in theory, is good, right? Because you, you fight something that enters your body that needs to go out. But it, the, this inflammation is only good when it actually leads to something being destroyed or pushed out of the body. And if that is not possible, when, uh, for instance, with plastic fibers that cannot be degraded by immune cells, yeah. then this inflammation is useless. A key point to keep in mind is that microplastics are not inert particles. They can affect health due to their physical characteristics, chemicals they contain, and microorganisms they can carry from their journeys across the globe. Since microplastics are insoluble in water and have a high surface area to volume ratio, Environmental contaminants such as heavy metals and persistent chemicals like PCBs can stick to their surface in a process called adsorption. Along with the contaminants, plastics also contain their own additives and plasticizers which are added chemicals. Plastic packaging alone has been associated with 4,000 different chemicals and they have been found to be toxic for human cells as well as several animals. Chemicals in plastic have been known to cause endocrine disruption in humans, but this is another topic for an upcoming video, so stay tuned, subscribe below. Microorganisms including pathogens can stick to the microplastic to form a living biofilm. There is initial evidence showing that certain microplastics can alter the gut microbiome. Trillions of bacteria live in our gut and enable us to absorb nutrients from our food. When microplastics enter the gut, the diversity of bacteria can change, causing a local bacterial imbalance. This condition can lead to gut dysbiosis, which can cause issues such as bloating, constipation, and irritable bowels. The impacts of microplastics on human health are so far in the scale of concerning to dangerous. Researchers are still trying to figure out the varying degrees of exposure and toxicity of microplastics. While more research is certainly needed and is actively being done on this topic, I will choose and recommend the precautionary principle, which simply means reducing further risk by prevention. We will not be able to completely remove microplastics from our diet given their omnipresence, but we can take steps to reduce it. So here are some specific and practical steps to reduce plastic consumption. Firstly, drink from tap water or filtered tap water instead of plastic water bottles. Studies have shown that plastic water bottles contain more than double the amount of microplastics than regular tap water per liter. Of course, filter the tap water well and use reusable metal bottles or glass containers to store it. Reduce seafood consumption as most seafood contains a lot of microplastics. Vacuum your house and remove dust as indoor dust has been found to contain thousands of microplastics and inhaling indoor air can be a significant pathway to microplastic exposure. Minimize the use of clothes made from synthetic fibers like polyester and nylon. Just one synthetic fleece jacket released about 1 million microfibers in a laundry wash. Try to use clothes made from natural fibers instead. Heat food in glass or ceramic containers, not plastic. If you microwave food in plastic containers, it will leach chemicals such as BPA and phthalates along with microplastics. Avoid takeout in plastic or styrofoam containers and dine in or use reusable containers if that is an option for the same reasons as the previous point. Buy whole fresh foods instead of processed foods packaged in plastics. Also store foods in non-plastic containers whenever possible. Plastic pollution is now a complex geopolitical and systemic issue which does not have a single solution. There is no silver bullet. The combination of targeting plastic manufacturers to reduce virgin plastic production while switching to recycled plastics, policies to reduce single-use plastic use, investments in truly biodegradable and sustainable alternatives, and product design for circularity is our path forward to a plastic pollution-free future. We need to ultimately move towards a circular economy where waste is only wasted resources. I wanted to end this video on a positive note. If you're interested in a video on more details on ocean plastic pollution and how to detect it for cleanups using satellite data and AI, then please go check out this video. In the meantime, please share this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment your thoughts below. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.